today I'm coming to you from outside of the studio. Uh, last week I profiled a young lady in politics and I think I'll be following that trend till the election date is near. Of course it's near. It's just a few weeks away. The young lady you're about to meet today, is uh, she's very energetic and uh, she's an inspiration to her generation. That's how I see it. She's the daughter of a very, very remarkable man and uh, her life has been nothing short of just milestones. She just keeps surprising us every step of the way. I think I put a smile on her face this morning, didn't I? Hi. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you're welcome. you. Looking all glamorous as usual. Same. Yeah. Thank you. You're looking good as well. Yeah. I don't even want to begin to imagine what your schedule is like a busy these one. days. A busy, busy one. Can you take us through it? Okay. I wake up morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get enough sleep. I have to take care of my kids. I've got two. Uh, make sure that they're ready for school and go to my campaign office, make sure that everybody is on track in all the lecture areas, everything is moving on. have to go to the chambers and see if um, lawyers are working the way they're supposed to and go to daddy's church and check if everything <laughs> is working as well. So it's quite a busy, a busy day for me, but um, I, I find a way of... Uh, managing wow, and making wow. sure that I it's, it's it's quite impressive i've i've always said that you you've always been ahead of your time you it know is. yes i wrote, I wrote a few things about her this young lady she was homeschooled uh she entered university at 17 please correct me if i'm wrong you graduated from law school at 22 and at, uh, at a very young age still you have your own law firm and uh, you've entered into politics, politics yeah. how did all this happen for you, how old are you now, by the way? Almost, almost there. Almost there. <laughs> ladies, welcome. Well, the ladies age. never say their age, so I mean, welcome to the club. That's true, that's true but I'm quite young, that I can promise them. Um, yes, as you said, um, it's been a whole kind of um, development and transition for me. Um, where I started from, where my father was coming from. Started off as a very humble person, um, as a farmer, as a pastor. And God has raised him to what he is today. And he made sure that he gave us all the education that we were required to get um, at home. Because he wasn't so much in favor of the um, new GS, uh, yeah, GSS, SSS system. So I belong to the old system. <laughs> and so he, he decided to hire teachers at home and teach myself and my big sister. Um, at 17, I got admission at the University of Ghana to read a very tough subject, which was law. And um, it was, we were the last but that read law as a first degree. And once you get in to read law, it's not like you've excelled and you're going to be a lawyer. After, There's more to it. <laughs> yeah, after the first year, you had to justify your inclusion. That's what they call baptism of fire. You have to make sure that all the courses that you were given, your grades were up to the grade point that were required of a law student. And hopefully after first year I qualified. I went to the Ghana School of Law um, in 2002 and was called to the bar in 2004. So as we speak, I'm eight years at the bar. I did not stop there. That's a mouthful. Take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Okay, take a deep breath. Go, go um, After law school, actually before I was called to the bar, I gained admission at the um, George Washington University in America. I, I, got, I went there in August 2004, and I had to come back to be called to the bar. And I read my master's in procurement law. It was a very new area. Um, I told my mates I was going to read procurement. Everybody, like, my what? professors who wrote <laughs> my um, references and all, they were like, why, what is that for? And, and I was like, I just want to <laughs> explore. I was adventurous, and I went there. I got... To, to work with the Office of the Attorney General in DC. Um, it was a good job, well paid. You know, your CV is a whole program. <laughs> is it? Your CV is a whole program. Please, oh, please go on. I'm, God. I'm sorry, I'm I didn't mean to interrupt grateful. you. Please just go right on. My father is a very, um, one person that believes in Ghana a lot. <laughs> he will tell you, he's a very, he's a nationalist. He's a, a patriotic person. So he was like, come down mm -hmm. and make, something out of yourself here in Ghana. So I got back. Um, I worked with Kulendi at law. I worked with Honorable Atachi and Zoya Chen, cool, 
I worked with the legal aid board. And then um, they were looking for a legal officer, the public procurement authority. That was around the same time that uh, President Kufu had passed the um, public procurement act and the board was set up and they needed a lawyer who had a specialty in procurement. And there you were. So I applied <laughs> and I got it. So the first legal officer of the public procurement authority now. And I'm proud to say that. Um, I, I just, I just put on my, my, my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Um, homeschooling isn't very popular here in Ghana. No, 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 yeah. it, it wasn't. How did you feel at the time when all your mates were going to school? <laughs> and our, you day, our day was Our day! <laughs> <laughs> you see our friends with biscuits and jaw fries and they're going with all ribbons and you just, you just be in the room and you'll be peeping through the window. Peeping through the window wishing it was you. Yeah, as a child it wasn't easy. We weren't used to it and because we 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 had we lived in a compound house and we had friends and we saw them go to school and do all that um we wanted to feel like them but we got to a point we realized it wasn't going to happen yet <laughs> so we better stick to what we we were in and 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 work with that we was, missing... was, that, was daddy strict was, was daddy, a strict, daddy was strict with books yes he's the best dad you can talk about but when it came to studies and books and all so when our reports we they did reports and everything and you go through it and all so if your grades weren't good you'd, you'd be <laughs> so in, in, a, in a way, Daddy was like the headmaster. Oh, he was the head teacher himself. <laughs> <laughs> and he made sure, and we did, you know, preps, and you know, you sleep, and you. That was work. Yes, then you sleep, and the teachers would come and wake you up late in the night, like nine. Then you go and sit down and read, and we had a timetable for our evening sessions and all. So it was more like you were in school. Body and, house. Yes, and in our room, our, our beds were bunk beds, like secondary school. So. He made sure that you had the whole feel. So of he signed us <laughs> to believe that we were in school, and I think it worked. It worked. It worked. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Your dad. Your dad is an amazing person. He's yeah. very creative. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. He sets his mind to something very futuristic. Yes. You know, he he thinks of the future. You know, and. Uh, I think it's rubbed off his children because, I mean, at 17, let, let me ask, I'm a bit curious. At 17, first of all, homeschooling, then at 17, you enter university. And law is a big deal. It was. It, it is still a big it, deal. It is. It How is was it like it. for a teenager entering mm. law school <laughs> with all these sometimes gray hairs? <laughs> I'm sorry. And sometimes, uh, that brings me to that. Sometimes I'm working with my siblings and I see a mate of mine, I oh, this was my mate in school. Like, I all your mates are go. Oh, people. <laughs> no, uh, it wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. But the the training that we had in mm -hmm. in in school, like at home, mm -hmm. uh, it was straight straight books. Mm -hmm. There was nothing like going for entertainment or anything. So do, those who knew me in Legon, who were my friends in Legon, would tell you that this is someone who was always with their books. And we're like, ah, this girl, she doesn't have a life. She doesn't. <laughs> and because I was tight. And we were in that, myself and my big sister, she went earlier than I was. The fear was, the man, my father will always ask for your grades. I mean, you know, there were students who just finished and then they'll go with their certificate. Daddy was different. Every semester he had to go. And he would ask you why this grade wasn't, you know. So it was, and my sister was already there with, you know, AA it grades. Is. And I couldn't That was have, a tough act. And that was a standard. <laughs> Up to. Yes, and I think I fell into the company of good friends as well, who were also, you know, Professor Nabila's daughter, Daphne Nabila, Celia. You know, they were all, you know, daughters of lecturers who were also like bookworm, and they called us a bunch of bookworms. You know, <laughs> we're always in a library, in the reading room, especially the first year, because wow. we all wanted our names to be there. And it wasn't like they won't, nobody would know you didn't get law. At the end of the year, the names will be pasted, pasted on the anybody. notice board. And nobody <laughs> would want a name omitted because it's public notice, you know. Oh. So, um, it helped. I keep saying this, I say this every time. We all have, we all had dreams when we were growing up, you know. I wanted to be a spy. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is too much. <laughs> 
I, I, I grew up watching too many Agatha Christie movies, James Bond movies, you know, so I had this thing, you know, I wanted to be yeah. some secret service. Obviously, that has gone down the drain, you know, yeah. sitting right here. Um, did you, how did your love affair with law begin? Did you always know that you wanted to do law? I didn't really envisage myself as a lawyer from childhood. But I was the type who would talk a lot and wanted to know everything and would argue about everything. So from time to time, my father would say, uh -huh, lawyer, no, but, you know, you know, even if it's not my matter, I'll find a way of making it my matter. And, uh, uh, you know, and always talkative, always trying to, even when my father was preaching in church, you know, he would say something, I'll say, ah, daddy, but you said this in the house. Well, how different is that, you know? In church. In church, you know, so <laughs> he was like, lawyer, no, yeah, 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 yeah. So I, that thing stuck. But obviously, um, he found a way of making me fall in love with the law. I had an uncle who was a lawyer. A lawyer. He's late, though. He would come home with his, you know, wig and gown and the, the collarette and all. And I was like, I enjoy, I, I, you know, it was something I thought was cute, you know, then I started falling in love, but I wanted to be a beauty queen, that was what I wanted to be. Oh, so, I wanted to be a spy, she wanted to be a beauty queen. That was what, I was watching this guy, kind of I And that was going to be your career, be a beauty queen and just be that, living? You know, when you're a child, you, you, you think <laughs> about crazy stuff. So, uh, you had a complimentary guy that said, hmm? Beauty queen. That's all. That's I all. thought it was a profession. You know, Miss Wild, you know, stay late in the night when my father is sleeping. They would make sure that. They used to show it late, late, late in the night, Miss Ghana and all. And I always make sure that I won't miss that. And I'll stay up nights when I'm watching. They wake us up, we're going somewhere, and I'll be dozing in the car. I don't know what I was watching, Miss Ghana. <laughs> things you do when you're a child, the things you do when you're a child. I mean, most of these politicians, you see them, they are normal human beings just like you. This is a remarkable young lady, Ajoa Asafi, if you just joined us. Back in the day, politics was a man's thing. And even if women were there, they were old people. But now I think that the trend is changing, that we are realizing that you don't need to be in your 50s as a woman to be able to pursue politics. You as a lawyer already had a lot on your plate. And they decided to nosedive into politics, politics yeah. as well. How, how, did that, how did that begin for you? During my students' um, you know, days in, in school, I, I was a politician. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I ran for the vice president of the Law Students' Union my second year. And I went on opposed. I won, obviously on opposed. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. <laughs> and then, um, as a Voltarian, I was in Volta Hall. Um, I was a member of the judicial committee, which was also by way of election, you'd contest, and then, and I was a member of Tescon on campus, like you know the students' union version of the NPP. That's a good foundation. Yes. So <laughs> I, I was. I was, I've always been a talkative. <laughs> On campus, there was always a competition amongst um, universities, you know, on, on the Commonwealth, on, on the African continent, and then international. The first was the All-African Moot Court competition. It's a moot, you know, you're given a question as if it's real, and you come and act as a lawyer. I will always compete on... You, you know, enjoyed doing I stuff yes, like I always that. compete in my school. And then I'll get chosen together with another one to represent the school. I've practiced as a lawyer too, because I work with the legal aid board, and I still do. They refer me most of the cases where people don't have money to pay for legal services. And I do that on pro bono. So I was like, if I'm doing that to help women especially, why can't I you know, offer myself where I have lived all my life, which was Taifa. I lived in Taifa, and my constituency is from Ekwabinga. I contested in 2007 and lost miserably. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you were in high hopes. Right? Everybody was like, this girl is too ambitious. Because I contested. How old were you? Okay, okay. then again, she was very young. Uh, yeah, very young. I was 25, 26. I was in 26 years. 25, 26. Were you hopeful? Very, very hopeful you were going to win? I, 
more hopeful than I was this time. <laughs> you know, when you're young, you know, you have so much energy and so much vim, and Absolutely. you want to, you know. Let me let me ask you this. Let me let me catch you up there. There, there are a lot of people that disappear after they lose. Yeah. You know, because uh, apart from being all these having all the foundation on campus, it's a different ball game mm. in politics. You know, Myra. yeah, sometimes I call you on the phone, I can just tell, oh my God, I'm disturbing her, she's so tired. tired. She's so, so, so tired. Yeah, you got it right. How is it like for you, having lost? Was, how was that feeling for you, having lost? The day they were voting, that same day I had my first baby. So I wasn't present when they were counting. So you were in the labor ward thinking of the votes being counted, young well, lady? You have no idea. I had my baby in my hands and I was crying that I had lost the election and I wasn't happy I had a baby. <laughs> It was a mixed feeling. I'll cry a bit and I'll console myself. Okay, I have a baby, so you will keep me company. So it was terrible. So actually, the labor was thinking, okay, maybe uh, I have to win, and then I have my boy. I then have push, to win, I have push, my baby. push. I was. It was something else. Uh, it, it was. It was sad. It was sad. But after all the crying and mm -hmm. um, people, you know, you had family, you had friends who would console you, and you had uh, mentors like in the party would urge you on and tell you that first times are always like that just put keep pushing so my baby was about six months and then i started I hopped, on to, I hopped on to the campaign trail again because that was my passion so now, now that you have won i mean um what, what has changed since you first of all what was the feeling like when the votes were being counted this time around um it was unbelievable for me but I must say that we put in a lot of work this time mm -hmm. around because the first time I was very ambitious and I wasn't you looking at them. I ignored certain things. Um, this time we, we put in a lot of work. We made sure that my message sang well with the people. We now it's, it's time. We are barely a few weeks away. This is the big deal. This it's, it's, it's happening now. The party or the honeymoon period is over, if, right, yeah. as they say it. Being a member of parliament is a big deal. Yeah. A lot of people look up to you. A lot of people look up to you to, to save them or be their savior, help them solve their problems. That is a huge task. Are you ready? Um, I am ever ready because politics is about leadership. It's about service. It's about... Um, being there for people and making sure that the right policies and the right decisions are taking. And I believe in participatory politics as well. I cannot have it all. I can't have all the wisdom in the world. And so every right politician, right leader, you need to get the right people around you. Absolutely. You need the right team to manage you. And I allow myself to be managed. I allow myself to listen to the needs, the worries, the concerns of people and to contribute towards national development. So I'm just praying that all the cheers, all the um, love that I feel around in the constituency will translate into votes on 7th of so. December. Um, yeah. <clears throat> like I say, may the best person win, or may the best party win. I am winning. <laughs> is winning. Yay. Let's, let's talk family. Let's talk family yeah. now. This is a very busy schedule that you have. You have how many babies? I've got two. There are no babies now. There are two. <laughs> they're, they're two no, grown people. Two grown. I have a four-year-old boy and a two-year-old. A two-year-old. Yes. How do you juggle motherhood with being a lawyer and being a politician and being all over the place? How, how does I that happen? I try to do it some way, somehow. Um, I I think it's all about um, time management. I try to manage my time well. I I also have support from family. Mm -hmm. But I always try to make time for my kids because this is the age, the formative age that they are in now. So if you don't keep an eye on them, they pick up the wrong habits and the wrong attitudes Absolutely. and all. And I, I think, think are I'm you, doing are you, well. Yeah, you're doing well. You, you're not homeschooling them. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm not that innovative as my dad is. <laughs> Homeschooling them. No, no, no. They, are, they are going through the normal school. That, that's that's wonderful. Um, you can answer this or choose to ignore it or yeah. edit it out if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Am I married? <laughs> yeah, you are asking yourself because people say that when women are in politics, they you know, know their, their love life or their marriage suffers sometimes and all that. You know. So. Oh yes, I've got somebody. Yes. 
you've got somebody yes yes, yes. okay yeah we'll leave that very very that. very somebody very 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 somebody <laughs> <laughs> okay and yeah. how about leisure apart from all this okay. what do you do for leisure do you even have a leisure time i wish i had i i wish i don't have it too many times <laughs> but at my leisure time i'm so tired i only sleep i sleep i read my my bible and i'm I also watch movies a lot, African American movies. I love them, you know. Like, why did we get married? Okay, you know, it makes me laugh a bit, and it makes me understand how. That's quite a tricky one. <laughs> <laughs> That's a tricky movie. Yeah. I like watching African American movies, and I sleep a lot. When I get the time, I sleep a lot to catch up on uh, all the rest that I need. Okay. So I have, I have, my life is quite boring. If I'm not on a campaign trail. I'm not with my children Trust me. in church. With that kind of schedule is not boring at all. It's just not boring. <laughs> Today we had to yeah. yank her out of a meeting to bring her here. Yeah. And I know from oh. right here, she probably has like a couple of them she has I to attend to. She's going to chase posters. She's going to chase posters, <laughs> right? <laughs> How could that be boring? So, I mean, from here you're going round, round, and it's going to continue all the way to December. If you had a message for your fans, let me put, put it that way, yeah. who are watching you, what will it be? That they should be courageous, they should be focused, determined, set, you know, targets and goals for themselves. No matter how bad you find your situation, make the best out of it. It hasn't Absolutely. been smooth all my life. Absolutely. There's been rough moments when I thought I can't do it. But, you know, when it gets there, you can only trust in the Lord and no human being. Absolutely. Just keep your Lord closer to you. Ask him, do your bit. I'm a practical Christian. I won't be in my room pray every day and expect manna to fall from heaven. But with your prayers and with your hard work, um, I believe that whatever your dreams are, whatever you, you, you want to set, what target you set for yourself, God will help you do it. Absolutely. And for my constituents in Bamekwa Binga, I am pleading with them <laughs> that on the day of the 27th of December, we have about 20 days more to go. And I believe that since um, there are two women contesting. You need to pick the best out of the two. And um, since we make laws in Parliament and you have a lawyer who has been there That's with you... That's a very subtle way of saying it. <laughs> who has been there with you <laughs> and was born and bred and lived in Taiwan is very, very concerned about what your needs are and has been a part of your problems all throughout. She will be the best to solve all the best panacea to your problems. So vote my address of one number two. Thank you. <laughs> May the best person win. I am winning. Yay. <laughs> Wish you all the best. And so the free SHS is coming and it's coming You just now. have to say that, right? <laughs> uh, I'm a beneficiary of free secretary. I was home, I didn't pay She was home, she did best So, I mean, well, before we say goodbye, what, let's talk about some of your favorite things. What do you like to eat? What is your favorite food? Red red. Oh, and like and beans and red, and red, and ampesi, and ampesi and plantain, uh -huh. plantain with contumri. You pour the, you know, oil on the it. oil. You can just no. see it, like uh, yes, it has no. to be floating. Floating. All of you will be in the middle. <laughs> Adra, thank, thank you. Thank you, Anita. Thanks for having me. Thank it's you. It's been a real pleasure having you here. You. Uh, so there you have her, beautiful, confident, and uh, she's told you what she has to offer. Thank you for watching this segment, and uh, stay tuned next week. Who knows who are my profile again? I'll be right back.